I'm Bismarck Asamo Asante, the founder and CEO of Nasambana Enterprise. Nasambana is a manufacturing and distribution cookstove factory. I'm also a national executive board member for the Ghana Alliance for Clean Cookstoves and Fuels, which is GACO. So Nassam brand, as I said, is a cookstove manufacturing company where we do produce LPG stoves, charcoal stoves, or briquette stoves, wood stoves, biogas stoves, ovens, and the rest. Yeah. We've been in business for the past seven years. We started in 2015, but in 2018, we received uh, the best wood stove challenge from SMV, which was, which was a national award. And SMV is one of the biggest NGOs from the Netherlands. And this was in a collaboration with the Ministry of Energy, the Energy Commission, GACO, and uh, with the CSR. Thank you. Thank you, that's, um, that's wonderful. Um, so can you tell us about um, the different cookstoves that you develop and um, maybe um, what, what emissions, what the values of emissions are for each of them? Um, okay, so then uh, when we started in 2015, we had the Jiko stove, the biomass stove with Jiko, what we call Japa in Ghana, which is a charcoal stove. So we decided to innovate that charcoal stove to an LPG stove. So then in 2015, we developed or innovate the charcoal stove to an LPG stove. So we do produce the uh, charcoal stove the Jiko type, but then we've also come up with other models, which are also charcoal, but they're with different designs. So the charcoal stove, the efficiency is 36% for the Jiko. And we have other designs, which we've tested with CSR, which we, we got 33% and 30% respectively. But then we have the wood stove as well, which is the firewood stove. The wood floor stove, we've got 26.2% as efficiency. And the emissions are also low. With the biogas stove and the LPG, we've tested, but we haven't gotten the result yet. But CSR confirmed to us that our biogas stove so far is one of the best uh, efficiency that they've tested so far. Ever since they started testing using the ISO, yeah, which is the international standard. So then we do produce, as I said, LPG, um, charcoal briquette, wood stove. But when it comes to wood stove so far, our wood stove is the best in Ghana. And we, we receive an award and we still have the models and we're trying to take them to the market. And we also develop uh, biogas stoves and we also produce the ovens for baking as well. And we also have other stoves which are integration. We come out with a stove that does charcoal and LPG integration. So in case we are using an LPG stove, we are using the LPG and let's say your gas gets finished, you can just take off the black burner and switch to the charcoal. So we have a base in it, and almost all our stoves come with ceramic liners, which is clay. And we all know that clay retains heat. So what makes our stove different from the other, our competitors, is that we use the clay in almost all our stoves, both the, the charcoal, uh, uh, the charcoal, the wood stove, and the LPG, all comes with ceramic liners. And the ceramic retains the heat. So you don't need much fuel to cook. At a point, you can even take away, take off the charcoal and your food will still be at a simmer. It will still cooked for you. So these are the comparative advantage that we have over our competitors. Yeah. yeah, that's great. So that's how you're reducing emissions by yeah. improving the efficiency so that yeah. less charcoal yeah. needs to be burnt. Yeah, so we are using the SDGs, which is the SDG3, which is the health and well-being. Because women, they uh, inhale uh, most of the smoke. So then our stoves are more improved, they're efficient, they're effective. So it, it, it saves them from all these ill diseases like pneumonia, uh, lung cancer, and the rest. And we also uh, use the SDG5, we promote uh, gender equality, whereby we train women uh, to empower them to be able to produce their stoves. And we also use the SDG7, which is uh, affordable and clean energy. So we're trying to promote adoption of clean, universal clean energy to all, all uh, areas, both the rural and the urban areas. Yes, and then we also uh, use the SD13, which is climate. So people are cutting down trees just to cook. And we believe that it doesn't have to be so. So as we are using the liners, you don't need to cut the whole tree before you can cook. You just need the branches. 
and less fuel when your food will be cooked. It's user friendly, efficient, and everything. And it has been tested and approved by CSR. Yeah. Okay, wow, that's um, another way to look at it. So, the, it's so deforestation is yeah. is reduced um, yeah. with this with this solution. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Um, and people and degradation of our forests also low. People are not cutting down trees. So. And so you. Which areas have you tested the, um, these stoves, or is it nationwide? Yes, yeah, but then uh, we mostly concentrate on the Western region, Ashanti region, and Greater Accra region. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now we are talking to the northern part of Ghana. That's our target. When it comes to LPG, what is limiting the expansion of the use of LPG? Because it seems people are still resistant. They want to they prefer to use charcoal and, and wood. Yes, yeah, so um, it's some of our culture beliefs. And others are also afraid of the LPG itself. Using gas, they're afraid to use gas in their houses. And it's because of the affordability as well. Because of the poverty rate in Ghana, people will not be able to afford LPG. So they still prefer to use uh, charcoal and wood stove, simply because they have access to the fuel. When they pass by at the back of their houses, they can get uh, the, the firewood to use. So they prefer to use firewood as compared to the LPG. So the government is now introducing the CRM, the cylinder recirculation model, where he's going to distribute the, the cylinders for free, and maybe he will help them to refill. But even with that, others are still not taking the cylinder because they are still afraid. And that's what they came to meet. They came to meet the biomass stoves, which is the charcoal and the firewood. So transiting from, I mean, the energy transition from wood stove or charcoal to LPG is very difficult for them. Yeah. So, um do you think, what, so what could help this? Is it a matter of education or sensitization? Yes, I believe so. We need to educate them. We need to uh, have uh, this uh, sensitization and they go to the market, educate them that it's not that risky, they can use it. And then we do demonstration for them to see that this is the new model. And if they, they go by it, it saves our environment, it saves their health and all that so that they know the benefit of it. Okay, all right. Now, when it comes to, the um, deployment of the the clean cook stoves. Yeah. Um, what are are there any? What are the limiting factors? How can how can it be easier? What, what policies or or what support from the business community or, or even from NGOs yeah. would help to accelerate the deployment and, and the scale up of, of the yeah. business? I think um, we will need financial support funded. Yeah, and one, one model that will also help us is the carbon finance project, where they will, they will support us with the funding for us to produce and either distribute for free or reduce the cost for them to also be able to pay. So let's say the funding company or the organization will pay 50% and the consumer will also pay 50%. So the carbon project is the only way that can help us to be able to distribute more for people because we will not be able to co cover even a third of Ghana yet. We just signed a carbon project with one of the Indian companies, but we're just waiting for the funding to come in. So I believe that that's the only way the carbon project will be able to solve this kind of problem. Program because we, the manufacturers, we are facing difficult challenges like logistics. I mean, uh, taking the stuff from our production center to the end user is very difficult for us. So if an organization can come in to support us with funding, we believe that we'll be able to do more. So, and what exactly, in terms of the logistics, is it finding the transport, is it the cost of fuel, or is it packaging, or can you be more specific? Yeah, transportation is, is, is a huge um, challenge because of, we all know the transporti uh, transportation uh, difficulty in Ghana, the situation in Ghana right now. Every day, I mean, fuel prices are going up. So if the government can step in for us, to be able to reduce I mean, prices for us and we'll be, to be able to get us uh, the, the advance for us to use them as distribution vehicles, it will be very useful to us. Okay. And so maybe you can also tell us a little bit about the carbon project. And I think you mentioned carbon credit um, yeah. to me. Can you explain what that's about? Okay, so carbon, uh, when we talk about the carbon projects, all that it means is that the investors will come in 
to have a conversation with you. They will tell you the kind of efficiency that they need from you. Maybe we want to distribute charcoal stoves. We need about 30% efficiency. So you will get them the model if it's Chico. Then they will bargain with you with the pricing. So now uh, the production cost is not from you, the, the producer. They will pay you. But the distribution, you will do it. So they will pay you for production and distribution as well. So now that burden of getting money to produce, to distribute, is off you, the manufacturer. It's up to you to just produce. You've taken your money, produce, and distribute. Sometimes after taking the data, and they taking the data to climate change center, there's a certain percentage that they will pay back to you after getting the money. Sometimes to, with, if they finance 100%, they might not give you that credit back because you have been already paid. So that's all about the carbon. So when, when, it, when you get yourself into this carbon and you sign, let's say, two years or five years contract, what it means is that now the burden of you thinking about how to get money to produce and distribute is, is out. OK. And then how do you, um, but how do they regulate? How do you even regulate the, the amount of carbon that's being, okay. yeah. OK, so you, you have a target area or target market. Let's say if you choose, um, Takrade in the western region. You, you let them know the population over there. So they know the number of cook stove that will go into that area if it's uh, 5,000. So they will ask you to produce maybe 1,000 for the next five months. So they know they are distributing 5,000 stoves in Takrade at this area. Okay, so then when you do the distribution, whilst you are doing distribution, you take data. Every household, the head of the family, what uh, technology were they using before? And would they use it? You let them understand why they need to do that before before you give them the cook stove. Even before you do the distribution, there's a stakeholder consultation program that needs to be held at the community level to explain to them that this is the project that we are about to undertake in your area. So they understand the project itself. So you take this data and give it to uh, the investor where the money is coming from. So they will take this data to the United Nations, to the Climate Change Center, and go for the money. And normally the money that they will put in this uh, project they might get two times or three times. But registering a company as a carbon is not easy. That's why it's not easy for we, the companies, to register. But they would rather register the carbon, they will get a certification, and you will you just do the production and distribution. Yeah. But as time goes on, if you're able to get money, and if you can register the company yourself, I know some of the companies are doing it in Ghana, then now you start your own carbon. But until mm. then, they will just be investing. You, you need to be under them and collaborate with them and work with them. Wow. Um, and in general, what is the mindset around um, low carbon development, just transitions and green transitions? From your perspective and, and then also from the communities that you operate, um, what is, what is the, the under, how is the understanding of just transitions and the need for it? OK. Um, I think the education is ongoing. Others are beginning to understand, but we believe that it will take time because um, other institutions wants to even eradicate the biomass crystal from the system. They don't want to support. But the, the, the truth is that in Ghana, about 70% still relies on solid fuels, which is charcoal and wood stove. So we can't just say that because we are transitioning, we're just forgetting about charcoal and wood stove. We still need to produce them, but we still need to sensitize the people to understand that they need to move from that end to LPG and to more cleaner energies like electricity. As we speak now, we are working with um, um, a, a PEAT to come up with an insulated solar electric hooker, which is ISEC. We went to Togo for, for a workshop and he's back here in Ghana. He'll be leaving Ghana on 26th to Malawi. So myself and O2, we are working with him hand in hand because we are already in there in the industry to come up with an electric cooker. So if you're able to come up with this electric cooker, we believe that since we are already in the industry, we can convince people to move from the charcoal and the wood stove to more clean energy like the ISEC and electric cookers. And in that, um, what are the main challenges with the electric solar insulated cooker? Um, okay, but for now, we don't see any challenge with it. Because um, if we are getting funding from Mex, it's supporting because we are we're trying to come up with an electric cooker. 
But the main challenge will be with our people, how to educate them for them to accept the, the product. For now, we come up with a prototype which is working. When we went to Togo, we were using one to cook food, to eat rice and the rest. So we come up with a prototype which is working. We've had a meeting with the SMB and they are ready to support the project. MEX is already supporting. They, they are funding the project. So we believe that um, people are interested, but it's up to us to also be able to uh, market. Myself, marketing is my background. So when it comes to marketing, I'm, I don't have any problem. But to be able to, for the people to accept the, pro the product, accept the, mar the, the market to accept the product is what is challenging for us. But we'll be able to do our best to market the product in any way possible. Yeah, yeah that's great. That's fantastic. Um, okay, Bismarck, so I don't know if there's anything else that you would like to talk about, maybe tell us about um, in terms of maybe what you see, if you see um, a future for Ghana in terms of, of, of um, green transition and, and low carbon. Um, and, and maybe also any reflections on the justice portal and, and the program that we've done. Okay. So with the program that we had yesterday and today, I think it's a very good platform. The trust is going to help us. Since it's not only in Ghana, we'll be able to collaborate with other uh, youth or young entrepreneurs from, uh, from other countries as well. Uh, so I believe that it's a good platform. It's going to help us and it's going to promote free trade as well. Yeah. And Ghana, uh, Pete is even planning to build a, a factory in Ghana, a hub in Ghana. So we believe that there's, there's a huge future. There's a bright future for the Ghanaian youth, the ordinary Ghanaian, for, for us to be able to take advantage of all these uh, platforms and all these investors coming in to be able to build and um, see the, the future ahead of us. I believe that when we do that, the government will also step in, the Ministry of Energy will also step in to be able to support us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Mark. It was great talking <laughs> to you. Thank you.